the story of reform here in the Netherlands is a long and rich one, and one that is stained in much blood. For the 700 years prior to Luther, there were various teachers who spread a knowledge of the gospel throughout the Netherlands. They had a Waldensian Bible translated into Dutch in the 12th century. Eventually, the teachings of Luther found a fertile ground in the life of Menno Simons, a faithful and earnest man. He was born here in Wittmarsum, educated in the priesthood, and was a staunch defender of the church. He was willingly ignorant of the Bible, refusing to read it for fear of being beguiled by the heresies contained therein. He witnessed the beheading of a man who was put to death having been rebaptized, and this caused him to study what the Bible has to say about infant baptism where he could find no evidence for it. This led him on a journey and he left the Catholic Church in 1536 and devoted the rest of his life to the preaching of these truths that he had rediscovered. He was the sole radical reformer here in the Netherlands and for the next 25 years he and his wife and children traveled all across the Netherlands and northern Germany preaching the gospel. His followers were doubly persecuted for they were often confused with the fanatical Munsterites as well. Truly the words of Tertullian rang true, the blood of Christians was seed to the gospel and this was evidence here in Holland. In contrast the reformation in Scandinavia, in Sweden and Denmark was much more peaceful. Whilst the fires of martyrs were burning all across England during the reign of bloody Queen Mary and the Protestants in France were persecuted on numerous occasions, in Sweden and Denmark the Reformation would unfold much more peacefully and one could argue they had a greater proportional impact in each respective country. The story of the Scandinavian Reformation is inextricably linked to Martin Luther and the Protestant bastion of Wittenberg. In the country of Denmark, one of the principal figures in the Reformation was a man named Hans Towson. Like many others, he had grown up in a Catholic family and spent some of his early years in a cloister. He completed much of his education in Denmark, where he was noted for his understanding of Latin and Hebrew, but he would also go on to study in Cologne. Whilst there, he came across some of Luther's writings, and in 1523, he went to Germany, where he met Martin Luther and became acquainted with the new ideas that were being espoused. He would spend 18 months studying there with Luther, after which he would return to Denmark, where initially he kept it a secret that he had been in Wittenberg. However, the good news of the gospel could not be hidden forever and it was only a matter of time before his teachings were noted to be different from that of others. He was soon expelled from the cloister, but this was perhaps the biggest mistake that his opponents could make. Now they had no control over him and he was able to travel and preach throughout the whole country, causing a great revival. He also translated the Pentateuch into Danish and this was circulated widely. Towson lived faithfully here in Denmark for the rest of his life and his influence was key in this whole country accepting the reformed faith. This church here in Copenhagen was built and named after him in memory of the great influence he had on the spiritual history of this nation. Around the same time as Towson was causing a revival in Denmark, the Petri brothers were having a similar impact here in Sweden. The work in these two countries shows that the disciples were just as powerful and scholarly as the giants under which they studied. Olaf and Laurentius Petri, the sons of a blacksmith in Orobo, both studied at the University of Wittenberg where they were influenced by Luther and Melanchthon. Olaf completed his masters in 1519 and they both returned back to their homeland of Sweden. 
They helped to translate the Bible into Swedish and through their hard work at the Diet of Västerås, Sweden was declared Lutheran, the first country to do so. Olaf Petri was buried here in this church, which later became the National Cathedral, supplanting the Uppsala Cathedral, a testament to the great work that he and his brother did. While it might have been easier for the Petri brothers or Towson to live, study and work in a place like Wittenberg or Geneva, God had a better thing in store for them. Their destiny was to return to their homeland and preach the gospel there. They knew the language, the culture and the customs and they were able to do a work there that others from elsewhere would not have been able to do. Whatever work you do, may you start with that which lies nearest. Whether it be your home church, which might be small, humble and not so lively, or maybe it's your home country. Not everyone is called to go to a faraway and distant land, but we can all start working for God right where we are. May you follow God's call as these men did in years gone by.